talking to Doug on the plot. We are not on the plot. I have yet to put a hot tub on the allotment or in the home garden. I'm at um, Rockingham Forest. And it had been my plan this week to say, um, back to programming as normal after our slight departure last week but clearly this is not normal but don't worry i've got lots of gardening content for you i'm just going to introduce it from hot tub so we're on our little uh, family january break it's kind of a banish the january blues getaway for a weekend in so it's me and mom and my sister my aunt my two cousins and of course Lottie and Dory as well so it's a full house and we're having a lovely time uh, we've brought all our gardening books with us so we've been doing lots of reading and planning um, and I finally got out my graph paper and I've been planning out the allotment and the home garden well actually less planning more just kind of drawing in what's already there um, my cousin was doing hers as well and even my sister got involved and started planning Mark's plot as well and obviously January is a great time for planning because there's not an awful lot to do in our growing spaces but January is also a time where we kind of get overexcited isn't it and start to want to sew things and I have been sewing things and um, that's what we're going to cover in this week's episode and other things that I've been getting up to during well during the last couple of weeks because of course last week was slightly different so we we're needing to do some updates i did want to mention about last week and just say it was my most commented on video um it's not my normal thing um i was a bit nervous about putting it out so i really appreciate all the lovely comments that everybody sent so thank you for that and i realized there was something that i missed that ended up on the cutting room floor and it was about being amateur i was talking to ali about this in in the comments and yeah we're not professionals we're not professional directors presenters producers writers editors all the sorts of roles that we have to take on to make these videos um and that's okay it's okay to be amateur and there are other channels that have money behind them that people are doing full time that um you know have a <laughs> have a team but I'm not that channel and many of you will not be that channel and I think we have to embrace the amateurness of what we're doing and understand that that's kind of the appeal of these kinds of videos, at least it is for me and watching other people's videos is that I'm watching them doing the same sorts of things that I'm doing in my garden. So um, yeah, I just kind of wanted that as a little add on to last week's video. Anyway, to this week's video. So January so far, oh my God. The weather has changed. We're now cold and frosty. I mean, I'm lovely and toasty in here. <laughs> it's pretty cold and frosty outside. I think we're due minus three tonight. But the month started off really warm and wet. And I think so, gosh, there's been that many named storms this month already or this winter already. But I think it was Henk at the beginning of January. And, um, and we got quite badly hit in Leicester. So um, some friends of mine, their house was flooded. Um, now I was in Derby for New Year and when I came back, it wasn't so bad in Derby. I came back, the allotment was okay. Like in terms of me and Mark's plots, it was the same level of flooding that we lived with throughout the whole winter. So there was really no difference. But other parts of the site were really flooded. Like entire plots were underwater. And um, so that was quite surprising because I did feel like Mark and I had sort of got the short straw in terms of where our plots are situated and the way in which the water collects on the site but clearly not the case you know it, it is worth further down when the weather is is particularly bad but the other surprising thing was my home garden flooded and i've lived in that house for nine years now i've never known it to flood like that um i i kind of looked out the window and saw the path was sort of underwater i was like that's strange and i came out and then realized that the flower beds were underwater um, i went to the back of the garden and my whole um sort of i mean it's a sunken bed but that was completely underwater my neighbor was out uh, brushing the water away from her house on the patio so yeah that was really quite surprising i guess the good thing is that it drained away really quite quickly um hopefully there has been no damage i was a bit worried about my asparagus um but this thing <laughs> that i've just stuffed those in and not really given them any care whatsoever um if they do die at least i've got something to blame it on other than myself so that's quite nice so the other thing i did at the beginning of january was so onions 
and I decided, because um, we've already watched me sow some onions. Oh, and just an update on those. Totally buried them far too deeply in the perlite. They weren't coming up and um, it had been two or three weeks. So um, I brushed off some of the perlite in the top and the poor little seedlings were trying to push their way up. So I have remedied that situation now and hopefully they will be okay. So we did do some onions together. I think we, we did the Bedfordshire Champion and oh gosh, what else did we do? Oh, the Long Red Florence. And we did the Leek Atlanta, which was the first thing to come up, surprisingly. And we did a, a bunching onion. Um, but rather than just sow them again, I thought we'd use this as an opportunity to do a trial of some different peat-free composts. So I will take you back in time to that. Good morning. It's the 3rd of January and my other onion seeds have arrived. So I've got um, Red Baron and I've also got a bunching onion called Ishikora. So these are a couple of the onions that are being used in, in grow alongs over, over the YouTube channels that are doing them. Um, so I'm going to give these a go, but I actually want to um, use these to do a bit of an experiment on some compost. So I've spoken before about how one of my resolutions for this year is to use better quality compost for my seeds. I didn't have much luck with seed sowing compost last year. Um, more because I didn't pot things on or prick things out quickly enough and they ran out of nutrients and just didn't do very well in particular. The tomatoes and the chilies. We'll get to chilies in a moment. Um, so what I want to do this year is just use multi-purpose and I want to keep using peat free, obviously. Don't want to be taking from nature. And part of what we do as gardeners is try and work with nature and give back to nature. And um, decimating peat bogs shouldn't be part of that. So I'm not using peat, but um, I do want a good quality compost. And as we know, companies haven't quite um, invested perhaps enough in working this out in terms of peat-free compost yet but there are some that gardeners do recommend and one of the main ones is silver grow from melkor and i used this last year actually but i used the seed sowing version of it but this year i'm just going to use the organic multi-purpose compost and then i want to compare that to another product and it's a product that i've had good results with in the past when I bought in bulk when it was on offer um, and actually I used it in bulk to uh, mulch the entirety of the front garden when I was transforming it into the um, food forest ish um, and um, it's plant grow so plant grow has only recently started doing bad com bagged compost and um, I can get it from the same place that I get the silver um, now the reason I'm trying the plant grow one is because it's a little bit cheaper per bag and also you get a li little bit more per bag so it's a more economical choice but I am willing to pay a little bit more if the product works better in terms of the silver. Anyway long story short I'm going to compare these two composts using these onion seeds. Now, obviously there are going to be some variables and this isn't going to be an exact science, but I'm going to try and do the best that I can to keep everything the same other than the compost. So um, I'm going to use the same tubs. I've decided to use these ones this time. Um, so I have did my previous onions in trays that I'm going to prick out, but I thought I'd try these ones in cells. I'm going to mix with the same amount of the mix, um, perlite, not vermiculite, perlite in each of the batches as well. So that's the same balance. I'm going to try and water the same, keep them in the same conditions, etc, etc. Um, so I'll do a row of red barren onions and a row of spring onion in each of these pots. And um, yeah, we'll keep our eye on them and uh, see how they do. Now, of course, I must remember to label <laughs> and label accurately, else this experiment will mean nothing. <laughs> We'll have a purple label for the plant grow. Oh dear. <laughs> and uh, what colour is that? Green one for the silver. So both composts were just purchased yesterday and um, they were both uh, kept outside at the garden centre and it's been very wet and they've been stored in the car overnight and they've just come into the greenhouse so they've not been outside overnight. Um, on first, sort of, both I would say are quite damp, 
so they're not going to need any really extra watering just to settle the seeds in. Um, in terms of feel, I would say the silver is very crumbly, um, not too many big pieces in it, it has a nice texture to it. The plant grow seems a bit more fibrous, but still, compared to some of the ones that you see, not too bad at all. Okay, I think I'm going to sieve each one. So let's, how much do we think we need in there? Let's, let's do four scoops of each. So, one, two, three, four, what do you think? One for look. Five. Okay, at the end of the sieving, that's what we've got left, which isn't too bad. And now it gets its scoops of perlite. So let's do one scoop of perlite. What do we think? Two? Let's do two. Okay, there we go. There's our potting mix. It looks, looks very beautiful. <laughs> Okay, let's fill our cells. It feels a lovely and light mix. Again, I want to make sure I'm doing the exact same thing with each. So I've just filled them to the top and I'm going to give them, what was that? Four or five, six taps. And then just even out the surface. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. And then we've got, so, Red Baron. Let's put you that side. On the spring onion will be the other side. I'm going to put a pinch of seeds in each one, which I guess is a little less exact. There we go. So that's the Red Baron. Uh, yeah, a little less exact because I won't know exactly how many went in each one. Hmm, maybe that wasn't such a good idea. Anyway, I'm doing it now. So pinch. Pinch, 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 pinch. I have to just make sure I think I'm being as generous with one as the other. And then I'm just going to lightly cover those with the compost. done. Now I'm going to remove this compost from my potting bench. Don't worry, it will get used for other things. And now we need to do the exact same thing with the plant grow. So what did I do? I did five, didn't I? Five. One. Two. Oh, I've not put it in the sieve. Oh, damn it. Oh, there we go. What did I get to? Was that three? Oh, damn it. I'm going to have to rewind now and see what I've already done. Okay, I've rewatched. I did five total and I'm up to three on this one. Okay. Four. And five. Right. Sip. Okay, that was a lot harder to sieve and there's quite a lot more left. Um, to be fair, because the compost is a bit damp, it is blocking the holes, but you can see actually it's quite, a, it's quite lumpy. Um, but it's not necessarily, look, those lumps are breaking apart. I think it's like a coir sort of thing, but there's some bits of bark as well, which the silver grow had too. Uh, okay, I'm calling that done. Okay, so same again. Um, oh, perlite. So I have two scoops of perlite. Where's my scoop? 
One. Oh. Try and be fair. Try and be fair. <laughs> right, there we go. Mix that together. I think that also feels really good, but maybe that's just because I'm not somebody who tends to sit there compost. So it's like, ooh, look at this. It's so fine. Right, that is well mixed. So, just as we did before. And I did my taps. One, two, three, four, five, one for look. That was about it, wasn't it? Um, and then just lightly flatten to get a level surface. Okay, and this is the plant grow. Got the spring onion and red barren. Red barren. Right, do you remember pinches? Pinch pinch these are very large pinches i mean i'm gonna be rather inundated with onions i think aren't i I'm not sure i fully thought this through oh, i'm gonna put those in your hands pinch 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 lightly top press down to ensure contact with the soil uh, I'm a bit loath to water them at all because um, the compost does feel damp. What do you think? Okay, I'm just going to give them a little water just to settle them in. Right, that's all you're getting. Okay, let's pop them into a tray, side by side, and they're going to head into the house. I'm just going to put a light covering like with my last lot um, to keep the moisture in while they're indoors. Once they germinate, they'll be coming out into the greenhouse. Okay, experiment is a go. Now I mentioned um, chilies right at the beginning there and um, I might do something similar with the chilies um, but I'll have a think about that and um, yeah it's going to be I think another week until I decide to do my chilies so um, watch this space. <laughs> oh they're watching me. It's been my plan. <laughs> Now I'm pleased to say that the seedlings have come up and um, they were looking pretty good when I left for the weekend so we'll do a little update on those at the end of the video when I get home tomorrow. Now the other thing I wanted to sow in January because I didn't do it in autumn was my broad beans. I'm pretty excited about broad beans this year so I'm going to send you back in time for that one. It is early January and I realise I've yet to sow any broad beans and I want to go all out on broad beans this year. Last year I had broad beans in the home garden and I also had them on the plot. They take up a lot of space so my thinking was that this year I wouldn't put them in the home garden, I would reserve that space for things like lettuces and more um, quick growing crops and instead do all my broad beans on the allotment where I've got much more space. I've got three varieties, but I'm only gonna sow, in fact, I might have four, but I'm only gonna sow two of them today. Um, and these are the overwintering broad beans, which you can sow, of course, in autumn. And I did, I've, this is, will be my third broad bean year. So in the first year I sowed them in autumn, they were super. Um, I, I think I did them in modules, then put them out, they grew fine. Um, I only did one row, I had like six plants not enough broad beans. <laughs> Last year I put some out in autumn, I think I direct sowed them and then we had that awful cold snap in December, wiped them all out. So I redid them in I think it might have been the end of January or February when I did them last year um, and I did the three varieties then. So my varieties are um, Super Aqua Dulce, 
and Aqua Dolce Claudia and I've also got the Scarlet Flower one and I did I sewed all three together and I planted them all out together and that was fine. What I'm going to do this year is stagger my harvest a little bit. So I'm going to do the Aqua Dolce varieties now um, because these are so January to March and um, or outdoors November, December. Uh, and the same with these is so out. Well, actually, the Aqua Dolce is so outdoors January to February, but I'm not going to sew outdoors. This is under glass January to March. <laughs> Did I make that clear? I've made that incredibly confusing. Anyway, the point with both of these is that um, you could sew them direct outside. I'm going to sew them in modules now because um, I just want to control them a little bit more. Uh, as we know, I have quite heavy clay soil on the allotment and it's pretty waterlogged. So I think it's better to do it in cells now and then transplant them out in a couple of months when they are nice, strong little plants, one hopes. Now, because I want to sow them in cells, I need a deep cell. So I've got one of these. These are from Container Wise. There's a lot in there and I'm going to sell them all because I want lots and lots of broad beans. Just be careful of the spiders that are in it. <laughs> so I'm going to fill this with multi-purpose compost. I've got a combination of the silver grow and the plant grow from the onion experiment that I was doing with some perlite in. So that will be fine. Um, I'm not going to bother sieving it because these are big seeds. Um, I mean, they're, they're beans, they're dried beans. Um, so I'm just going to fill up the tray push in the seed to a, um, a depth of, I think, a couple of centimetres. Oh, these, these say a couple of inches, well, a couple of inches, five centimetres, couple of inches. Push them down into the soil and um, give them a little bit of a water and then they will stay out here in the greenhouse, is what it's called, it's a greenhouse. Okay, that's, that's the plan. Our label. I haven't distinguished between those two as different varieties. They're both a, a, an aqua dolce and that's fine. And then I'm going to sow the, the scarlet flowered ones perhaps in three, four weeks time. What's today? 8th of Jan. There we go. Raw beans in. Now, as I said, things have turned pretty cold and they are just in the greenhouse. So there's been no action on the broad beans just yet. Again, we'll check them when we get home. So that's onions done and broad beans done. And of course, the other thing that is commonly sown in January is chilies. And I have never sown chilies as early as January before. And I've had not much luck with chilies in the past. So I decided to start them early this year. I've got a heated propagator. I've got some grow lights for when they come up, just some cheap ones, but hopefully they'll be okay. So I've decided to give it a go this year. And because I really wanted to make sure I got good germination this year, I decided to try something a little bit different. Good morning. Oh, <laughs> just knock off my whole setup there. Um, I am set up on the living room table my dining table, my work table, my desk, whatever it is. And um, I'm ready to sow my chili seeds. And actually I'm very ready because I can't delay it because I've had my chili seeds soaking in uh, tea for the last 24 hours. They've been in for 24 hours so they need to come out, um, I assume, before they start to rot. 
Um, so yeah, we're selling chili seed this morning, which is super exciting. This is earlier than I did it last year, which is in the hope that I will actually get some chilies <laughs> this year, because my plants, well, I mean, I abuse them. Like my tomatoes, the chilies got abused. Am I wonky? I think I'm a bit wonky. Hang on. There we go, that's better. <laughs> Um, what was I saying? Chili seeds. Yes. So last year, um, I abused my plants like I did the tomatoes because they stayed in seed compost for far too long. Uh, I kept them in rather small pots and yeah, they were weedy, poor little things. I probably got a chili out of the whole lot and I sowed a lot last year. Um, and I'm sowing quite a lot this year too, in part because germination wasn't great last year and I lost quite a few plants in the process which is why I'm using this rather strange method that I'm using this year to help improve germination. Um, but also because I want one of at least each plant. So I want to give myself a good chance of getting that one plant. So what I've done is um, soaked four seeds of each variety and I have seven varieties. Now last year I put those all in individual cells. So it's, that takes up quite a lot of space and I'm very conscious of uh, space this year because things got a little bit crazy last year, just in this space. So my table at the moment is at half its size, but it goes to double this and I had it right along the window. This is my sunniest window in the living room. And um, it was full and I had the mini greenhouse up here as well with the grow lights in. <laughs> It was, it was full on. So this year, I'm not doing them in individual cells. I'm going to do them in a tray and I'm going to put the varieties across the tray. So I'm really thinking about space saving this year. So I'm thinking about germination. I'm also thinking about good compost. So I'm using Silver Grow compost. I've got it right here. Oh, you can see the mix. There we go. It's got perlite in, but it's just Silver Grow and perlite. And even though Silver Grow is a nice, fine compost, I have also sieved it. Um, I know actually there were only a few sort of large particles in there. Good stuff. Um, but also to just kind of get some air in it and stuff as well. The other prep that I've done is left the compost in the house overnight. In fact, it's been in here a couple of nights, so it's nice and warm. It's been actually quite near the radiator. So um, that's not that, you know, it's uh, minus one outside today. It's lovely and sunny. This is lovely lighting for the house. Um, but um, it's, it's super cold out there. And if I had left this in the greenhouse and brought it in to do this sowing, it would have slowed down uh, germination. So I've got warmish compost. I've got my trays. I've been super organized with my seeds. So each one is in its own little ramekin with its tea. Uh, it's been in there for 24 hours. I've got each one with its seed packet and I've also already written the labels. So I am feeling very, very organized. Having said that, I've just realized I've got nothing to pour the tea into <laughs> as I try and sew these. So let's go get a bowl and a sieve. There we go. I think I've got everything I need now. Now varieties. Um, okay, so I've gone with seven varieties and these are the exact same seven that I sowed last year. Because I had such little success last year, it didn't seem very prudent to go and buy more chili seed. Um, instead, I thought I'd give all of these ones another go. Now there's none that I feel particularly uh, precious about with the exception of the Lemon Drop Hot Citrus Chili. Um, it's got some other names, but essentially it's that lemon chili. And um, these the seeds were from the incredible seed library. So they were free seed, um, saved by somebody else, and I love that. And all the rest of my seeds are from when um, the Heritage Organic Company had a sale, not this year, but the year before. And um, there's cayenne in there, which is one um, that I want as like a standard chili, so that's good. But there's also things like Ring of Fire. What else have we got? Early Jalapeno. Uh, we've got Habanero Orange. Uh, we've got Hungarian Hot Wax, which is one that I really wanted to get going last year. And it was a shame that I couldn't get going. And one Portugal, which I don't really know anything about. <laughs> I have saved all of the varieties. Like I've looked them up on Google and saved them all. So I know like how hot they're going to be and what kind of things that they're good for, like sauces or jams or cooking or stuffing or whatever. Um, but I'm not a chili expert at all. 
which is probably proven in the fact that I didn't manage to grow hardly any last year. But I'm really excited about chilies this year, as I am with tomatoes, so I really want to give them the best start that I can. And that's why I've chosen to do this kind of tea pre-soak. The idea is that it allows the um, casing of the seed to break down a little bit, which aids germination once it's in the soil. I've seen a couple of people do it on Instagram and I, I sort of had a vague memory of it from the past and I'm like, okay, let, let's give that a go this year, seeing as that, you know, I really want to try and ensure good germination. So yes, they've been 24 hours in the tea and now I'm ready to pop them up. So let's get some soil into our trays. It's always a danger doing this in the living room, isn't it? You know you're going to make a mess. Also, <laughs> she says after waxing lyrical for several minutes, I need to be quite quick because um, I should be getting off to work. Right, so I've got my lovely mix. It's a bit dry because it has been in the house. In fact, I'm wondering whether to bottom water this before I get started. I think that's probably a good idea. Right, we're going to do the tap and then I'm just going to level off the top. So I'm not pushing down, I'm just sort of leveling it off. I think in the past what I've done is compacted soil too much when I've been putting it into the trays um, and that doesn't help with drainage. Okay, um, so let's feel this. Yeah, it's got a little bit of moisture into it, but it's quite dry. So I'm gonna bottom water these um, and then we'll come back and carry on. Drippy, drippy. Okay, the um, surface of the compost is now damp. So that's a little bit better. Right, we can get sewing. So, I've just, um, oh, let's, uh, let's let you see down here. Oh no, <laughs> almost lost myself. Slightly odd angle, but uh, I want you to be able to see what I'm doing down here. Um, so I've just drained my seeds. So this is the lemon drop hot citrus chili. And because uh, I've got seven, um, I've got two trays. So four in one and three in the other. The one um, for the three is going to be the ones that I really want. So I'm just going to pop the seeds onto the surface of the soil and press them in. And you give each seed a good little bit of space. And actually you can almost just see, I think, the little tail of the root or the shoot. There we go. And then the most important part, <laughs> label. Okay, one down, so that's the lemon drop. Um, so cayenne was the other one that I really want. So we'll do cayenne next. We'll pour out the tea. There's my seeds. And then, in fact, it's probably easy to do it like that and then place them. Perfect. Label, okay, and done. Uh, which is the other one that I want to be careful with? Oh, it has to be the Hungarian hot wax, doesn't it? Oh, <laughs> lightly pressed into the soil and I'm just going to put a sprinkling of soil on top now just to cover the seeds. Try not to move the seeds about as I do it. Okay, 
Now that top compost is quite dry, so we'll just uh, firm it down lightly and then give it a little water. And then I'm gonna cover these to help keep more of the light out, um, but also to keep the moisture in. This is room temperature water I've had in the house waiting for this very moment. And then, so the final thing is that these need warmth um, and probably more warmth than I can actually give them. So I have a heated propagator. I've just set it up behind me. Um, I cleaned it yesterday, dried it off. Um, I plugged it in. It's been plugged in while these, these were soaking. So it's starting to warm up. I'm going to put these directly onto the tray at the bottom, the heated tray, because chilies really want about 28 degrees. Now my house runs at, well, I woke up this morning, it was 11.5 in my house. So no wonder these poor onion seeds over here are having a hard time. Um, so I definitely need a propagator. I also have a heat mat that I sometimes use for kombucha and that does run hot. So I think if nothing happens with these and I feel that like the temperature isn't enough in the propagator, I'll use that heat mat as an additional source of heat. And that's just um, while they get germinated, uh, once the seedlings start to come up, they can come out of the propagator and um, they will have to do their best in my, in my house on this sunny windowsill. Okay, thank you for joining me with the chilies. That was pretty exciting, I'm excited. I'm gonna get these in the propagator and then I better get to work. <laughs>when I left for the lodge there was no sign of chilies just yet but that propagator wasn't getting very hot so in the evening when I got back from work I switched it out for a hot plate that I've got um it, I can, oh it is years and years old I do feel slightly worried that I've left it on at home while I've come away because it is an old old piece of equipment nevertheless I think mum used to use it for Chinese's when she was like just married or something anyway I put that inside the propagator and the chilies just lifted off of it using um, a uh, cooling tray that you would use for cakes and things. So I didn't want them directly onto that heat because it is quite hot. So I've lifted them just off of it, put the propagator lid over and I found a little temperature strip thing. And it told me before I left that the temperature was between 27 and 28 degrees in the propagator now, which is much higher than the propagator itself can manage because again that's an old propagator in fact it's a bit battered and broken it's one that mark gave me a couple of years ago that he no longer used anyway so the chilies are at the right temperature that's your kind of ideal temperature 27 to 28 degrees and um, there's no sign just yet but everything looks fine and i'm quite eager to get home and see if anything has come up <laughs> dory is watching me from the window hey dory no dogs in the hot tub. Oh. <laughs> oh. Right, I don't know how annoying the sound of the running water is. I can get that to switch off, although I've not got the bubbles going. So I'll probably wrap things up quite rapidly for today. Um, I guess the other thing just to end on, as the weather has turned, it's got super cold now. Um, I'm actually really quite glad of it because um, my garlic went in quite late and it needs it needs its cold. So I checked on the garlic and that's looking fine. Um, the other thing I noticed um, was that the hellebores are starting to come out, which is really exciting. And actually, perhaps even more exciting than the hellebores. I'm, ooh, is it? I don't know. But remember I bought that witch hazel last year? I put it into the herb bed and I was really chuffed with it because I got it at an absolute bargain price because it was out of season and um, it's just started flowering. It's just started. I'm hoping that it'll have a much bigger display in a few weeks time. But those little yellow and red, such unusual alien looking little flowers have started to come out. I will leave you with um, what my seedlings are doing at home. See you next week.